Hey guys, Hop here for TFB TV. I'm out at the range with a Keltec P17 and an optics ready slide for a Keltec P17. The reason I introduced these separately is because they're sold separately. As of this recording, at least, there still is no optics ready SKU of a Keltec P17. But if you already have one, you can buy the optics ready slide directly from Keltec for 199 bucks. 199 bucks is also what the Keltec P17 costs originally. That is the MSRP. Street price is sometimes even slightly below that. So it may seem like a little bit expensive to double the cost of the gun to get an optics ready slide but these slides actually come with a red dot on them and the red dot, at least if you look at retail prices, makes up probably 50% or more of the cost of the slide. So 400 bucks for not just an optics ready, but an optics equipped 22 pistol still makes this one of the cheaper packages on the market. Let's take a closer look at this slide, see how it differs from the original slide. And we'll talk about the different red dots you can potentially put on this thing because this isn't the one that it comes with. So the original Keltec P17 is not optics ready, although some people seem to think that it is. I think they're being misled by the position of these two screws on the top. Those are not for mounting an optic. That's just part of the construction of a Keltec because Keltecs are typically made out of recycled super soaker plastic and folded up Bud Light cans. So this has a very thin folded piece of metal making up the body of the slide. And then there is a steel breech block at the rear with sort of a plastic housing. And these two screws just sort of bolt the whole assembly together. Together. Now there are aftermarket options for mounting a red dot to a P17 slide that take advantage of the position of those two bolts. The kind of problem with that is that 22 blowback pistols are very dependent on slide weight and spring rate in order to cycle reliably. So this gun is tuned to be pretty reliable as it comes out of the box with this much reciprocating mass on this spring. The thing is, if you put a red dot on here, you're adding mass. If you have to put a plate on there in order to put a red dot on there, you're adding more mass. And the end result could be decreased reliability. Sounds like some of them work pretty well as long as you're using the right types of ammunition. This gun has been fairly reliable for me. This is my third serial number of the Keltec P17. If you remember the saga of my P17 review of years back, so far so good. Oh, nope. So far, not so good. The uh, right side manual safety lever just disintegrated in my hand. Anyway, this gun has been very reliable for me as long as I use decent quality ammunition. So it doesn't really like to cycle Winchester white box bulk stuff very long. Once it starts to get a little bit dirty, we start to have extraction issues. But other than that, this thing will happily chew through a bunch of ammunition like CCI mini mags all day long. And that's still a very cheap load. So extremely fun, little plinker, but it's not optics ready and putting a red dot on a 22 pistol makes it even more fun. So Keltec has introduced an optics ready or more realistically optics equipped slide option for the Keltec P17. You can go on their website, buy these directly for 199 and it comes with a Crimson Trace CTS 1550 red dot on top. If you were to just go out and buy one of those red dots direct from Amazon or something, you'd probably pay a little bit more than $100. So it's not really like the slide itself is the biggest driver of cost. The fact that it comes with a red dot probably why it costs just as much as the pistol does itself. There is a disclaimer on Keltec's website that it was only designed to work with the Crimson Trace CTS 1550 that comes on there. The mounting footprint on the top of this slide is the Shield RMSC footprint, which is what a Crimson Trace CTS 1550 attaches to, as well as a ton of other micro dots. However, almost none of those are as lightweight as the CTS 1550, which is a very lightweight, low profile and plastic bodied red dot. So that keeps the weight a little bit down. Keltec has also gone ahead and skeletonized this folded uh, top piece of the slide. I assume to further reduce weight to make sure that the resulting weight of the slide assembly is pretty similar to the original pistol. The rear housing of the slide, the part that goes around the breech block is now, I believe, aluminum instead of plastic. So that probably adds a little bit more weight, but it does give the red dot something to screw into. Swapping to the red dot equipped slide is pretty simple because the takedown of this pistol is extremely easy. And if you don't have the threaded barrel on there, it's really fast to take the slides off and on. And the recoil spring is captured at the front, so it's not gonna fly off. It's super fast to change to the optics equipped slide. 
The only other change to this slide is that it comes with a much taller fiber optic front sight, and that is so that it can co-witness with the little sight notch, which is on almost every single RMSC pattern optic. So will it necessarily co-witness properly to allow you to use them as backup iron sights with something else, such as, for example, the Vortex Defender CCW, which I tried out, or this Crimson Trace Rad Micro Pro? No, not really. Hmm. At least with this combination of uh, red dot and the front fiber, it just hits three feet high at 20 yards, so basically unusable. Hey guys, hop in the shop here. So why did I try to test incompatible red dots on the kel P17 slide? The reason I wanted to try this is because I don't think anybody out there wants to use a Crimson Trace CTS 1550. The optics mounting footprint that kel uses on the P17 slide is the Shield RMSC pattern. It has the two recoil lugs at the front, the two at the back, and the hole spacing is correct. However, for some reason I can't figure out, it looks like they used a different size of screw. The screws that come with this slide are actually smaller in diameter than the screws that normally go with optics of this footprint. The version of the CTS-1550 that comes mounted on the slide also seems to be a custom job for kel -Tec. The mounting screw holes that go through the body of the optic are smaller than they would normally be on one of these optics. I was able to install the Crimson Trace Rad Micro Pro in place of the CTS-1550 using the same screws. The screws don't completely fill the screw pockets in the red dot, but that's okay because the red dot is still located by all four of the recoil pegs, and on the Crimson Trace red dots anyway, the caps of the screw push down in a certain position on the dot and hold it in place. Not an ideal setup, but totally workable if you really hate the CTS-1550. With the Vortex Defender CCW, I searched through the included hardware that comes with that dot. It comes with tons of little packs of screws, and one of those sets of screws happens to work perfectly with the kel slide. If I remember correctly, it was the screws intended for use with the Smith & Wesson M&P 2.0. So how about reliability? I put a whole bunch of bulk ammunition, CCI mini mag, 36 grain hollow points, 40 grain solids, uh, Winchester white box, the Super X marked stuff that's really gross, uh, shot some Remington golden bullet, 40 grain solids, shot some CCI standards, shot some federal auto match, shot, shot some, uh, some CCI suppressor stuff, and I shot this thing a little bit suppressed and a little bit unsuppressed. I never get tired of shooting that stuff. All of it seems to work pretty well. I have similar reliability issues when the gun is dirty using cheap ammunition as I did with the original slide. So I don't think the slide has had any impact on reliability. If I shoot this thing with decent ammunition, it doesn't even have to be super expensive. You know, just use CCI mini mags, which is just barely a step above a bulk round in cost and availability. Seems to work perfectly well. Just gotta clean it periodically as it starts to get pretty filthy. You know, that's just a rimfire thing got to deal with it. I also did the majority of my testing using red dots that were not the Crimson Trace CTS 1550 because it's a very old and not particularly enjoyable red dot for me. I did a bunch of shooting with the Vortex Defender CCW, which unfortunately, as it turns out, is even worse than a CTS 1550. And then I switched over to this, the Crimson Trace Rad Micro Pro, which is a 5 MOA green dot. Actually, I think it's 3 MOA. Do, do, do. No, nope, that's five. I was right. Anyway, uh, this is also not a super great red dot just because it doesn't get bright enough. Even with a fresh battery, if it's got direct sun on the sensor, it goes to its maximum brightness mode, and it's it's just not enough. So the, uh, the reason for testing different red dots was to see if changing the weight of the red dot really had that much of an effect on reliability, and it doesn't seem to have had any at all. Almost all of these Shield RMSC pattern optics come in at or below one ounce. The heaviest one that I put on there was the Defender CCW, which I think is like 0.9 ounces. Uh, the Crimson Trace ones, the plastic body ones, probably half an ounce. This one I think is uh, like 0.6 or 0.7, somewhere between there. So overall, this thing is really pretty damn fun. It takes a gun that was already very fun to shoot, makes it even more enjoyable, also can serve as a nice red dot training platform if you want to do low-cost practice of acquiring and shooting with a red dot equipped pistol. And it doesn't seem to have any effect on reliability, whether suppressed or unsuppressed, this pistol seems to like all the same ammo that it did before. There is, however, one source of concern with this slide. The interface on the bottom of the breech block, where it interfaces with the frame rails, started to chip. All right, so the thing you're pointing at right now is the piece that just broke off, which is bigger, I think, than the piece that... No, wait. Which side was missing before? I'll have to check the footage. Down. This side was missing before, I think. So we've had a, another piece of the uh, breech block cut loose. 
And if we're if we're correct, it looks much bigger than the last yeah, one. Yeah, it's it about. Looks like that one won't clear the rail. One piece cut loose at probably a little bit under 100 rounds, and another even larger piece cut loose at around the 500 round mark. In between that 100 and 500 round mark, you could see a pretty obvious hairline crack forming. So the pieces of the breech block that interface with the rail are chipping off and shortening themselves, which is interesting because there's really nothing for them to impact, and the pieces that chipped off actually sit behind the frame rail uh, when the gun is in battery. So there's really they're not running into anything they're not being battered by anything and also they're not strictly speaking i don't think totally necessary for the gun to function uh, which you know maybe is not what you want to hear but despite having broken off two pieces of the breech block this thing is still chugging away it's working just fine uh so yeah, I guess it's not really that big of a deal as long as that's where the damage stops. And I'm not worried about this thing flying back and hitting me in the face because the front of the slide is, is folded over and it, it just can't go farther back. Even if the rails completely disappeared, the worst that would happen is uh, this thing would just fly off the front of the gun, which yeah would be extremely unlikely. And if it did happen, it'd be really hilarious. So this is a pretty cool gun. Um, I suspect that most of the slides don't break off inside like that. And I'm sure kel would take care of you if yours had that problem. The only thing I think that could make this gun better is if they just make a red dot equipped or red dot ready skew. So you don't have to buy the gun for $200, buy the slide for $200. That's still cheaper than almost any other rimfire pistol out there to say nothing of one with a red dot equipped. But the fact remains that it could be even cheaper if they didn't sell you two slides. All right, guys, that is all for today. Thank you for watching. TFB TV is supported by our sponsors, Ventura Munitions and Top Gun Supply. Ventura sends us ammunition so we can do these videos, and Top Gun Supply provides us with some stuff to give away to people who support us directly via Subscribestar and Player, which is uh, the French rebranding of a website that used to be called Utreon. Uh, Utreon was a pretty cool name because it hybridized the words YouTube and Patreon. Um, but, you know, maybe that was a little too close for comfort. So they changed it to Player, which is an abominable name. Anyway, there's links to both of those in the video description. If you'd like to support us directly, we would greatly appreciate it. And you'll be eligible for all the giveaways that James puts together. You also get to watch a Q&A series that we do, James and I, as well as some of the other uh, auxiliary members of the TFB crew. Most of whom are even cooler than James and I. And we are pretty goddamn cool. Alright, see you guys next time.